network monitoring. So with network monitoring, we're trying to provide our administrators the ability to monitor the health and status of our networks. There's lots of different monitoring resources and tools out there. Uh, we use things like Simple Network Management Protocol Servers, SNMP. SNMP is operating over port 161. We also have syslog servers. We also have event viewer logs and network sniff sniffer packet captures. And we're going to talk about all of these in more detail. Simple Network Management Protocol, it allows us to send information using a set. We can get information using a request using a get or we can receive unsolicited information from managed devices called a trap. Managed devices can be routers, switches, and servers. So in this case you have an example of a manager and the managed router sending information back and forth using those get, set, and traps. There's several versions of SNMP, the latest one being SNMP version 3, which is what most people are using now and you should be using in your networks. SNMP 1 and version 2 use community strings to gain access to devices. If you leave this at the default community strings of public, which is read-only, and private, which is read-write, the devices can be compromised by attackers. Instead, version 3 addressed the weakness by adding three primary, sec primary security enhancements. We have our integrity added with hashing the messages before transmitting them. We have authentication to validate the source of the information. And we added confidentiality using encryption by using DES56 encryption to provide confidentiality and privacy. Now, DES56 is still fairly weak. Luckily, this SNMP is going on on our internal network, so we hopefully have trusted things. Uh, but again, you do have to worry a little bit about that DES56. SNMP v3 also groups SNMP components as entities to increase your security by putting them into different groups. Syslog is used to collect logs from routers, switches, and servers. All that information can be sent back to a common syslog server. This lets an administrator better correlate the events and see trends, because instead of just looking at the logs from one router or one switch, he can look at all of the logs in a time sequence from all of these devices at once and merge them together. There's two primary components here. We have a syslog server. That's what is going to receive and store the logs from the clients. And then you have your syslog clients, which are devices that send the log information. And again, those can be routers, switches, or servers. Syslog security levels. So each message sent varies in a different security level. Higher syslog levels have more detailed logs, and the lower the number, the higher the security risk it is. So if you have a level zero, that's an emergency. If you have a level one, that's an alert. A level two is critical. Level three is an error. Level four is a warning. Level five is a notification. Six is informational, and seven is debugging. You should have for the exam a good understanding of the fact that a lower number is more severe and a higher number is less severe. And you should be able to have a good idea of informational is less severe than critical, right? Or emergency is more severe than critical. And get an idea of where things are as far as the ordering of these. Here's an example of what a syslog message will look like. As you can see here, we have a date and timestamp. We have a priority that tells us what level it is, whether it's a warning, a notice, an alert. We have a host name, which will actually be the IP address of which device sent you that information. And then you have the text of the actual message itself and whatever that content of that message is for you to be able to look at. Uh, this is an example of a Kiwi syslog server, which is one of the more popular ones out there. Uh, there's many different brands out there as well, though. Logs. So there's lots of different logs out there. We just talked about syslogs that were sent by router switches and servers, but each operating system also has its own logs that it provides. And so if you have an operating system running on a network client or a server, they can produce their own logs. Windows, for example, produces an event viewer application that, allow, that produces different logs. And the three logs that we see there are going to be our application logs, our security logs, and our system logs. The application log is going to contain information about software applications running on a client. And we have three basic security levels there. We have information, warning, and error. Information being the least, error being the most. And in this panel, you can see how the application uh, log will display. You'll have your level, your date and time, and your source. When you click on one, the details will show up in the bottom. Similarly, we have a security log. It contains information about the security of the client, things like your successful and failed login attempts. As you can see here, we have audit success or audit failure on when people tried to access this particular server. 
Lastly, we have our system log. And our system log has other information about the operating system. Here you can see we have those errors, warnings, and information once again, just like we did with the other log. And that's our basics of network monitoring.